I wanted to go over some of the problems from the worksheet that I gave you guys today in class. So we most of the questions on the first page were dealing with these four different compounds. And I want to focus on the two questions, question one and question three, that have to deal with the UV spectroscopy. So the first one of these asks about which of these structures would absorb energy at the longest wavelength. And the second one of these is which of these would have the largest homo-lumo gap for its UV absorption. So let's talk a little bit about how that relates to these different compounds. So the first question talks about wavelength. And what we find is when we have an increase in conjugation, we see a corresponding increase in the wavelength of absorption, or the lambda max that we're measuring for that particular compound. So if we compare these four different compounds, A has three double bonds that are in conjugation, B and C both have two double bonds that are in conjugation, and D just has an isolated alkene. So A is the longest conjugated system, so A is the one that's going to have the largest lambda max, because it has the largest, the longest conjugated system. That's going to correlate to the largest or the, the longest wavelength or lambda max that we're going to experience. So for question number one, the answer that we're looking for was A. Now the second question, or the third question actually, talks about the homo-lumo gap. And to try to explain what the homo-lumo gap is, if we consider any conjugated system, you're going to have any number of orbitals that are, that are involved in your system. These all represent molecular orbitals. And we're going to have electrons that are filling up the lower half of these. These are all the bonding molecular orbitals. Up here we have the, the anti-bonding or non-bonding molecular orbitals. Now this orbital that is the highest occupied molecular orbital, that's our HOMO. And the next one right above this is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, or the LUMO. So the energy transition that we're looking at, that delta E, that HOMO-LUMO difference, or what we call the HOMO-LUMO gap, that's the energy that we're measuring on our UV spectrometry. So that could be the lambda max value, definitely one of those, those values that we're measuring is how much energy does it take to take an electron from here and promote it up to there. So how does that work? So we just talked about how if we increase the conjugation, we're increasing the lambda max that we experience. Now remember, a longer wavelength is actually a lower energy. So the energy of absorption is proportional to the inverse of our lambda max. So to follow up on this kind of a concept with our homo-lumo gap, that increase in conjugation leads to a decrease in our energy absor of absorption or that homo-lumo gap energy. So in the question that asks which of these would have the largest homo-lumo gap, larger energy means smaller conjugation. So D is the answer that we're looking for in that particular case. So the answer to three is going to be D. So hopefully this was useful in trying to iron out the relationship between the conjugation, the wavelength of our absorbance, and this delta E or this, this homo-lumo gap energy. These are the types of questions that we're going to have to answer as we try to relate the structures and their UV absorption.